uh, and I have close to 12 plus years of experience in the industry in clinical research and also in clinical data management. So this is a short introduction about uh, me. And uh, right now I am, I am here to, you know, show you some industry aspects and share my industry aspects with you for clarifying certain doubts for you to start a, a data management course along with clinical research and what could be your growth aspects and prospects with this course so that's one of the main goal why we are having this webinar so after the webinar you can definitely connect with the coordinator whoever has approached you you know to join this uh, meeting and invite in person to clarify your doubts one on one and even at the end of the session we can have a doubt clarification session so you can uh, jot down your questions right now whenever the session is going on and you can answer me at the end of the part okay sorry you can raise your questions at the end of the part so that i can answer you at the end of the session okay so let me just start over so Today, you might have a lot of questions like based on this webinar, what could be an outcome, whether it will be a job or it will be a work or it will be a career or it will be, do I need, uh, can I join this course with my bachelor's or with my master's? Uh, so these kind of questions must be there in your mind revolving, right? So all such questions, clarity, we are going to give it to you in today's uh, webinar. Okay. So. The presentation objectives is basically to give you an overview about clinical research operations, data management, data analytics, medical data review. So these are the main objective topics which we are going to concern and talk and give you an overview about the job aspects, growth aspects in the industry and looking forward in industry, what you can expect if you choose a career in these domains. Okay. So the key facts is first i wanted to talk about the clinical research industry so the clinical research industry is a very big industry very revolving industry very prominent industry which is available there in the market for more than uh, you know decades now in india so this industry started in the year 1940 few of the requirements and drug requirements have been there in the market but prominently not using as full-fledged research since 2003 okay so after 2003 now we were full-fledgedly have involved ourselves in doing clinical research and human research it's not that before that we never had research it was available but the rules were not that prominent to do a research in India because the rules were, rules were very generalized, generic requirements were available before 2003. But after 2003, where the rule and we also had one emergement called as Pan India. So the Pan India was launched only in the year 2003. So after that, the drug industry was also a prominent industry for giving larger revenue in Indian market. Okay. So now, I don't want only to stress on the Indian market. I will also give you a picture and outline of the US market also. So why I'm talking about the US market or want to show you a dollar conversion rate here? Why? Because most of the pharmaceutical industry are all based in US and also in Europe. Most of the industry are based in US and in Europe. So that's why the pharmaceutical giants, like we have Pfizer, we have AstraZeneca, we have Astellas, uh, we, we have many companies like Glasgow Smith Line. So many companies are there based in other countries and that's why the revenue is calculated in the dollars and billions. So how much time and cost does it take for one drug to be launched there in the market? is around 10 to 12 years the drug gets developed so if you start your molecular research today so when you can able to see a product there in the market is after 12 years maybe now with this technology front still you can able to reduce the timeline like 7 to 10 years you can able to reach your drug in the market it is a very new drug so the new drug means a new molecule or a new uh, you know, biosimilar or new biological, any new product, which is never been there in the market. So for that, how many years do you require to 
take that into the market is 12 years so how much cost will be involved as in us dollar conversion is 1 billion so this industry is not a small industry it is a very big industry to be very honest and that's why here job sectors also you can see that they are multinational companies coming forward to do research in india or to help and support their research in outer countries just ignore the background just to support the research in the outer countries i'm so sorry i'll just keep my self in mute so what i wanted to tell you is that the research is obviously seen in other countries right so when the research is obviously seen in other countries the dollar conversion rate also comes and there are many multinational companies who are investing on their drug to do the global research so when they are investing on the drug to do a global research they are using and inviting resources from india as well to support their global research and also to support the national research which is happening in india so your opportunities you can are vivid now so you can also apply in companies as a multinational companies or you can also uh, apply companies which are based in other countries you can globally sit here and you can work for the research happening in the global directions okay so here and one more point i would like to tell you so here if i want to talk about a drug to develop a drug and to launch a drug into the market you require a lot of regulations you require a lot of rules which you have to follow in order to bring the drug into the market it is not a simple task like those days einstein was able to develop his product you know graham bell was able to develop his product but how many literal years did they invest their lifetime in creating one novel product so everybody don't have their their lifetime to create their novel product pharmaceutical company definitely not so that's why they needed a lot of manpower to work on their drug and to bring the drug how fast as we can we don't want to invest a lot of time into it because when the drug reaches the market only they can able to see the conversion that is their revenue can be able to see only when the drug reaches the market so this is also one fact that they need skilled individuals so when i'm going to talk about skill it is clinical research skill so now i have a question to ask you here what is your perception about clinical research skill my dears can you just tell me like what do you think um, i think to get into the clinical research industry i need to have this skill like that you can also use the chat box or you can definitely use uh the you can unmute yourself and you can talk please take leadership don't feel like oh what will happen if i talk there are 30 participants here if i go wrong somewhere what will happen don't don't have this certain perceptions in your mind and please unmute and talk so if you are planning to enter into the clinical research industry so now if you want to enter into the clinical research industry what skill set do you think you need to you should have can you just tell me what skill set you should have you can i if this question comes to me yeah somebody have raised your hand adit gunar can you just talk ha uh, i'm i think that uh, the skill set that is required uh, can be uh, the most important is clinical trial and the uh, icsg guidelines should be uh, main priority to enter into the clinical research field okay so now generally you told me like clinical trials and icsa gcp that is a, a good catch point here you are talking about regulations so do you think only regulations is required to enter into the market adit or somebody else also can answer do you think oh, yes. one only theoretical knowledge is enough or who contradicts this if you contradict what is it you think that oh yes sultana can i yes go ahead yes we have to have the medical field background and also we have to know about the drug also the violation rules and prohibition rules and all everything about the 
drug i guess okay so, so very process. yeah so yeah. very good so here we are that's why in this presentation object we have something which is pertaining to clinical research operations so what is clinical research operation skills is we are going to teach you about icia gcp we are going to teach you about regulations if you want to do a drug development how to handle the drug how to manufacture the drug how to practice and have a good clinical practices those things we will be learning in clinical research operations but also we definitely need system required knowledge so when i'm going to talk about a system required knowledge it is obviously applications which are being used in clinical research in order to collect the data don't you think that that skill is important for us to be there in the industry of course yes so and here also dr juhina she has also mentioned experimental as well as clinical experience okay yes clinical experience obviously because you are gonna do research on human beings and definitely you need to know about human beings before doing a research definitely yeah i do agree dr juhena and apart from that mainly these days to expedite so now let me give you an example those days you do you remember when you were child or your father mother they used to go to post office in order to save the money then you used to have a register they used to go and pay every month and they 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 used to save in the post office but these days does anybody go to post office to do the deposits to receive the money no so we use banks right it it depends on you what kind of banks you want to use what kind of customer service you would like to have and everybody is having a saving account everybody is operating accounts using applications with your mobile phones with your net banking with your banking services directly visiting the banker calling the banker to your home and filling certain forms yes so we are going as per our convenience and why we have moved in from the post office industry to a banking sector to save or do some investments or try to do you know a payment transfer or something because we find it user friendly right and also it is saving a lot of time so if you are based here in india in one part and if you want to send your parent in other part so how it is happening it is very user friendly with the help of an application where you can trust that application and you can send that money that is been transferred like a data so what is a data data is nothing but an information like you are transferring one information which is your fund so likewise in clinical research also we are collecting a lot of data so what kind of data are we collecting we are collecting clinical data right so when we are going to talk about clinical data it is a human data so they this human data might have certain confidential information this human data is a very tedious data which is going to allow you to do your research and ask and allow you to publish your research and only if this data is collected well you can publish your research so now for example you are involved in a research you have to collect that relevant research data and then you have to publish then only your research work can be uh, outcome can be seen whether your research is successful or not same wise every drug industry whenever you are trying to do a drug development their aim is to reach the drug to the market and get the license from the market to market the drug in the market so when will you get a marketing license in the market only when you are able to convince your marketing licensing authority to give you convince that this drug is working this drug is safe and this drug is effective so how well you can able to prove your marketer that your drug is going to be safe and effective only when you can collect the relevant data and show them that this drug is effective and safe and for that definitely we are requiring many kind of applications these days so that we can prove our analysis to the marketer so and also it becomes and makes the researcher life very user friendly to sit in one place and work you no need to 100% revolve around you cannot be today in india tomorrow in us day after tomorrow in europe you cannot do that can you do that to collect the data because we are not doing an in indian research here we are doing a global research here globalization has already come up in the market from since 2000 10 so now where from the 
time when the globalization has been hit the market we have to do a research as per the global trends so what is a global trends we have brought up something which is called as remote concepts like you can sit here and you can work for global projects outside india and you can deliver it and what kind of delivery we are doing only a data only informatics only analytics right so what is data what is informatics and what is analytics these are english words what is data what is informatics and what is analytics who can tell me what is data what is informatics and what is analytics anybody what is data uh yes sultana yeah go ahead sate yeah data is nothing but whatever we have collected in all the phases the information everything and all okay what is informatics about the drug uh information is um, in every phase we have to uh, collect the patient and um, the dr the drug the reaction and everything about the information of the drug everything and all and analysis is all these processes step by step okay like i would okay very good i would tell you data is nothing but your human data information your human data like relative to safety or efficacy so safety data what kind of side effects the patient got in after taking this drug effects after taking this drug what health condition has been improved so that is that relevant data informatics so we are using different tools to collect all this information analysis analytics so we are using again one more system to perform the analysis and submit the report to the regulatory authority so in every activity of clinical research what is involved is one machine one system one application is involved so how many of you know what kind of applications are used in clinical research how many of you think that you have the skill with you can you raise your hand which application is used in clinical research any any idea um microsoft access excel very good okay and then this is an application which is used not only in clinical research but all over the world for all the information technology other than this database very good what kind of database is we used in clinical research metadata metrio very good metadata metrio oracle right rave so yes. these are the databases which are already there in the market which is already designed why it is designed in order so that we can use it to collect the clinical research data so these days we are investing a lot of time to know the system design the system customize the system and use the system as per our needs so that's what this skill is something which you may have or you may not have this you would have learned from your schooling or colleges or you would have not but here if you join this course here we would like you to give you this knowledge of the softwares which is used in the industry in order to collect the data in order to analyze the data in order to submit the data in a better representation and better organized manner so this is what skill set also demands in the market so if tomorrow if you are appearing for an interview so they will first question is uh, they ask you what is your qualification second question they ask you what is your experience or exposure so certainly many of us will not be experienced but at least what kind of exposure you have with the research right so the exposure what kind of exposures you can have in research what kind of exposures you can have in research can you just tell me what is exposure exposure is nothing but learning something from people who have experience 
going to a symposium, going for an exhibition. Why people conduct exhibitions? In order to showcase their talents. And why do we go and visit there? In order to get exposure of things which you don't know. So that it can be utilized in getting you an outcome or an output. Right? So that's why. This research skills, it, along with the analytical and informatic skills is required for you to get jobs in the industry and industry expectation is also this because industry does not have a lot of time to interview you take you train you and then put you into a project and then make a revenue for that company so when that company obviously gets revenue when you are ready when you have when you are ready to make them revenue to the company so as simple as that logic is some people may not have time to go and stitch an attire and wear in a party these days you can see a lot of boutiques available which is already customized you go and pick it wear it and so that you can save your time and effort and money into it right so similarly every company has this policy where they don't have time to train you so that's why these training centers are there and available to give you the skill sets which is required in the market expectation so that it can be covered up and you can get a better exposure and better jobs in the market well paid jobs in the market right so this is what i wanted to tell you as what is my objectives here and how clinical research is operative and what is the expectations there in the market right so here and also i would like to tell you the clinical research so we are talking about research clinical research this is nothing but human research so the human research is not done in one month it takes 10 years to 12 years of timeline so in the 10 years and 12 years we are doing many things so this is multidisciplinary field where Today, you are learning a system. Tomorrow, again, one more new system and new version comes up. You have to get adapted to that and you have to work and you have to deliver your data. So here, they require you to not work with your comfort zone. So you need to work along with the expectations of the market. You need to be the masters in the market. And this is also a multidisciplinary field. Like you, we require a lot of resources to do the research. We don't need only doctors. Definitely doctors are required to do a research, but everybody cannot be a doctor. We cannot find that many doctors in the market. So that's why we are also going and having a non-medical team members also in the research team. So when I'm going to talk about non-medical team, who and all are being involved into it? Pharmaceutical people, life science people, and we also may have alternate medicine people. Paramedics also fall into the prophecy of non-medical team so this non-medical team also have a lot of good career opportunities to make in the market like clinical people like clinical people obviously they have their base and growth in research definitely we need doctors to interpret a lot of data and do a lot of research and analytics but still they need support of non-medical team members in order to do this functionality in a better way so this is a multidisciplinary way so what is a multidisciplinary way here you many people are required and the jobs are available not only in one pharmaceutical company but also we have dedicated clinical research organizations who support the pharmaceutical companies to do the research the research are done in the hospitals the research are also analyzed in the laboratories so we can find diverse pool of jobs which is available in the market so where the jobs are available in the pharmaceutical companies in clinical research organizations it is available in the hospitals in laboratories anywhere where the clinical research is happening relevant job we can able to find it. yes so we have a pool of opportunities right so and in order to do a research as rightly I told, it's not only one effort, it's a joint effect. So we need a lot of stakeholders to do the research. So who and all are the stakeholders? We have the regulators like the country authority who can give you a license. And then who is applying license to that country regulator, the pharmaceutical company. 
and who's helping the pharmaceutical company to get the license the contract research organizations so now the regulatory authority wants an oversight of the research who does an oversight ethics committee it's a group of individual of people who already have experience and giving their knowledge in interpretation of the research and giving them the suggestion and approving the research on day in and day out and we need obviously doctors investigators medical qualified persons to do the research along and only doctors cannot do a research you need a supporting staff to the doctors like a nurse pharmacist phlebotomist physiotherapist uh, labor uh, laboratory technician so all these members are required for you to do a research in an hospital and obviously without patients you cannot do a research you also need a lot of patient pool pertaining to your study and now in order to perform the research you are going to use a lot of laboratory techniques so you need laboratory analyst and lab mainly to interpret the research data and from that laboratory research data you can able to prove your say the drug is safe and also the drug is effective and then you need people who can monitor this research like whenever research is happening from the start till the end how research is happening and they the sponsor need someone to oversee this and tell them the reporting whether the research in the hospital is happening in the right way and manner whether we are collecting the app data required data and who supporting them in doing this is data management team so now i am concentrating here in order to research to happen with all the team members we need the effort of data management team with the help of information technology and analytics okay so this is what i would like to tell you here so here clinical research is done in phases which we already know so now whenever whichever phase is there what we are trying to collect we are trying to collect data and then let it be a phase 1 let it be a phase 2 let it be a phase 3 let it be a phase 4 what we are collecting in this we are collecting the data so while we are doing the research and while we are collecting the data while we are doing the research and while we are collecting the data we have to manage the data very well so who is here representing and managing the data the data management team so we have a different team in clinical research or different function in clinical research who's going to manage all the data which is evolving in research and not only that you also need an administrative team like the backbone of the research is done by the investigators the doctors the supporting staff the regulatory authority irb iec monitors sponsors so there are many stakeholders involved in administration of the research to perform the research so that they can collect the data so here in this particular course you are going to get both the knowledge hand in hand the administration and also the information technology okay which is required to collect the data and every drug development has to go through this phasing like if you are having a drug and if you want to reach the drug into the market obviously the drug author country a drug company has to do phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 in that relevant country and get that approval from that particular government and then market the drug into the particular government and they have to go through this approval phase okay so this we can vividly discuss when we are doing the sessions and when i'm explaining you about the methodologies of the research so when in the clinical trials you have different phases right so uh, if you take just like phase 1 so phase 1 what we are trying to do we are just trying to know the drugs whether it is safe and also whether it is effective because that is a requirement as per the government or as per the any regulator if you are doing a phase 1 data phase 1 trials you have to submit the phase 1 relevant data what data they may require they may first require the safety data how safe is your drug on the human beings so this is what we have to do a research on and if we take a phase 1 so for that conduct of a phase 1 what you need let it be phase 2 3 4 anything but you this process is common this is the process outline so now protocol 
so what is this protocol it's a detailed document tells about how to do the phase 1 how to collect the data for the safety of the phase 1 what are the methodologies and process you have to do it in the phase 1 so which is mentioned in this protocol okay and this protocol has to be approved by your group of committee member who are research experts and this based on their approval we have to submit it to the regulatory that is the government authority of that particular country to also get an approval with this methodology we are going to do the research we are going to give this drug to the patient on this time we are going to collect the blood we are going to sample the blood we are going to analyze this 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 parameters in the blood we are going to analyze an mri we are going to analyze a ct scan we are going to analyze a echo like we are going to perform all this test on this frequency and differences and we are going to prove and tell you that our drug product is working well on this set of individuals to prove the safety data in the phase 1 so this will be mentioned in the protocol and this will be approved by the regulatory authority also by the group of experts ethics committee and afterwards the sponsor has to choose a investigator that is a doctor to do the research with and they will follow this protocol the investigator will follow one common protocol just told by the sponsor and then they will be doing the research so how they will do the research on whom they will do this research they have to enroll the patients so patients or healthy volunteers so in phase 1 we generally choose healthy volunteers because the side effects easily can be reversed so you have a side effect which is an headache and he is healthy if you stop the drug immediately the headache will go it can be easily reversed that's why we choose healthy volunteers we don't choose patients because patients is already affected with some disease or disorder or function so the reversal of the side effect is very little impossible with the patients but if you choose an healthy volunteers it is very easy right that's why we enroll the healthy volunteer or the subjects and we do the approval process and like we see whether they what kind of disease condition and health condition they have according to the protocol and then we enroll them after enrolling them how we enroll them we, we they have to give us a voluntary consent like this is our drug i am going to tell you that are you interested to participate in this research and it's a study if they tell yes i am interested to participate in this research they have to give us a consent and then only you will be taking them into the trial and then you will be giving the drug to them and you will do all the procedures listed in the protocol collect the data so where the data is collected it is collected in one document which is called as case report form it is a form commonly collected from all the patients so in your research if you are going to have 100 patients from all the 100 patients you are going to collect the same data same information which is available in the crr for example if you are applying for a passport whoever it is if it is a 10 year individual female male you are in india in different states but still the application form remains the same yes or no to get a passport similarly if you are going to enrolled in the study whatever whatever it is you are individual from any country but the information what you are going to collect and analyze for your research is the same set of question and answers so we are collecting this and this is called as a case report form we are collecting all the information of the research in the case report form so case is nothing but the healthy volunteers or the patients and here they are reporting this data to the sponsor because sponsor is interested to collect this data in the in the form of a paper in the form of a form okay so that is called as crf so here we are not using any more paper crfs paper crf is something which is very old right technology but still if your study is small you need to know that methodology also but if your study is going to be huge because we are going to do a clinical trials on a big population like sometimes we do phase 3 trials which is close to 18000 participants 20000 participants so how are you going to manage the data of 20000 participants so here we need one manpower and one functionality which is called as a data management so what will the data management do they will manage this forms which is collected from all the individuals and then they are going to clean the data review the data in order to clean the data and see whether the data which is available is valid error free 
and if it is error free we mark it as a data clean and they will lock those fields which no more can be editable by any other persons after it is clean and they will send this to the analysis team so who performs the analysis team the statistical or biostatistician will be performing the analysis for the research with using different softwares and then it will be analyzed again by the biostatistician team whether this research was successful or not whether we were able to meet our out outcomes or not and then we are submitting this data to the regulatory authority so ideally what is been submitted to the regulatory authority we are not producing the patient as such we are only producing the data which is collected from the patients so how are we collecting this data from the patient we are collecting the data with the help of an application so here the application needs requirements of designing creating collecting interpreting reviewing cleaning reporting everything lies with data management team okay so does anybody have any doubt in this any doubts i'll give you a small pause here so can i continue guys okay ma'am what is the uh, role of then uh, clinical trial assistant or cra in this process okay cra is a job role available in the clinical research operations like i told you administration right so in order to administrate they will be there going to the hospitals in person and whatever is been filled in this form they will verify whether if there is a field which is talking about a height of the patient which is collected on from the so and so patient from so and so date so they will go to the hospital they will see whether this on the so and so date the prescription has the height information or not whether it was literally done or not or just they are giving us some cooked up data so this is verified by the monitor and which is the administrative part in the clinical trial so we have two types of monitors on site and remote so on site monitors will verify the data remote monitors will see which data is missing follow up for the data okay how many forms are filled how many forms are not filled so not filled forms they have to follow up and they get that information from the team so i'm just giving you a interpretation in one word it doesn't mean that they do only this they do a lot of things but in clinical research as i told you important stakeholders are there right so one in, important stakeholders is monitors or clinical research associate understood okay any other question okay any other question from any other person so okay so can i continue the session now okay so we still have 15 more minutes and then i will also give you 15 more minutes for your doubt clarifications also don't worry so this is a very regulated industry guys because we have a lot of laws and this has been brought in from many kind of good and bad practices but we are taken some bad practices example and we don't want to do those bad practices which has happened in the past so these are the bad practice examples which we talk about the history how the research was done and how the research should never be done so these are the examples okay because there you can find a baby with no hands and uh, short limbs because it's a side effect of a drug and here you can see some females these are females they are been done with some genetical experiments in order to see and improve the you know uh, population in the one side of given population in german when world war 2 has happened okay so now these are some examples bad examples in the history how the research should have never never happened and based on that we have brought in code of ethical conduct ethical conduct is see now we are doing a research we have to perform and see whether this research drug is safe and effective 
but in order to do that you no need to kill an individual you no need to harm an individual you no need to you know um, deprive the rights from the individuals but what you can do is you can do this research in a good way and you need to know the good practices of doing a research so that is called as good clinical practice which is here represented in international guidelines which is an international council of harmonization and also it is mentioned in indian law in indian good clinical practice so there are different these are also one of the laws which are emphasized in europe and us and then they have also brought in in india with the help of indian gcp so all these laws and regulations how they have brought in what has been written there so all those set rules also we will be learning in this given uh, session okay which is clinical research operations so this is one regulatory body in india which has its own law so which is called as a schedule y so indian gcp is a reg it's not a law it is a guide what is a guide guide you may follow you may not follow but if you follow you will be a better person but what is law in india if you don't follow you will be punished and you have to obey the indian law system likewise indian government has brought in a law in order to do your research in india these are forced rules which is mentioned in schedule y this is a document which talks all about the laws which is mentioned for your research in india if you want to do a good research in india and this has been launched in the market or brought in into the market by one organization which is a authority what is the authority authority is nothing but the government is running it and the government wants everybody to follow for that they have brought in laws so which government yeah, under indian government which department brought in schedule y it is central drug standard control organization which is falling under ministry of health and family welfare of india so uh, everybody's health is managed by indian government with one department which is ministry of health into their administration they have an organization managing the drugs which is cdseo so cdseo has written law which is schedule y so this we follow in india if you want to do a research in india we need to follow it if you don't follow it and you tell that you are doing a research even indian government can put you in behind bars so that is the outcome so that's why whenever you do a research in india you have to follow this law likewise if you want to do a research like i told you many individuals sit in india and they work for global firms right so there are many companies like they used to put you in their global projects and they want you to do a global delivery so in order to do that you have to also learn their laws like you we have fda that is food drug administrative act and we have ema so emea is european ministry of health which is having this law ema ea sorry i missed an e in that so this is some regulations which you have to follow in order to do the law or you you need to do the research in other country okay everybody understood okay so this is data management i'm going to talk now and give you an outline on data management so until here whatever it is mentioned about regulations and code of contact and here these are the examples which you will be learning in the clinical research operations in order to do the administration of your research and then we also need to learn about the technology so that the data management team manages only the data which is evolved with the technology so what are we collecting we are collecting the human data so we get this data from the faces of the research and in order to manage that data we use a lot of applications which are managed by different vendors like oracle enform i medi data rave and which is managed by the data management departments in order to report the data to the regulatory authority okay so 
data management versus clinical data management so data management is done in many departments also in finance also in uh, health but in clinical research if we are going to manage the clinical research data we call them as clinical data management professionals so in industry you can able to find a lot of clinical data assistant associate trainee in data assistant data anal data uh, analytics so these are the roles which are open and available in the market and if you want to become one in the market you first need to learn about clinical data management that is organization and representation of your clinical data okay so this scenario we have already discussed earlier but until here let me just give you a stop here so any doubts from any of the team members now did you understand the difference between what is data management and what is clinical research operations what you will be learning as both streams here in this course presentation if you want to take a data management and clinical research operations what you will be learning any questions but in order to get a job in data management you definitely need to have an outline knowledge about how to do the research because we are going to handle the clinical research and clinical research processes will be involved into it so you first need to interpret and know what are the processes and definitely then only you can able to perform your functional well okay so in order to perform your function well and to do your daily deliverables in data management you first need to know the basics of research which is clinical research operations which are ru rules laws guidelines okay of your research um so now let me give you a interpretation like why you need clinical research why you need to choose clinical research okay or data management why you want to be a part of data management or clinical research because this is a very high revenue earnable industry uh, because every um, multinational company who are investing they are investing in billions and now if they are investing in billions why they are investing in billions because they wanted to take up a conversion from the market after the drug reaches the market and they want hands on people to do the research in order to bring out the better effect in the market right so now in order to do that many investors know that if you invest 1 billion from the market after 20 years you can take 100 billions also because this is a high yield revenue industry so that's why researchers and investors are there seen in the market more these days after pandemic has hit because we know and we have already realized like what effort have been done with the pandemic if your health is not good how our lives was changed so every body life got changed because of one health factor of covid right so now after covid like before life of covid many people have after life of covid why because health is a very important constraint for everybody to live their healthy life so now that's where everybody realized that if you invest in clinical research you can able to take up the returns and also many people are involving to do clinical researches many researchers are there in the market like i have given you a representation here in 2015 how many research in 2018 how many researchers were registered and i can also tell you in 2023 we have crossed up more than 3.5 lakhs 35 lakhs more research are been invested and we could able to see that in the market okay and here only in 3 years you can see how much active research have been increased so that if there are more researchers are there more jobs will be there more revenue will be there in the market we can able to find jobs so now after 2022 we have this n number of practice is available there so you have major therapies 
where research is happening on oncology, central nervous system, respiratory system, endocrinology system, cardiovascular system, and everything. Okay. So we have a lot of systems there available and the research are happening in number in all this indications because we could able to see a lot of new diseases evolving in all these diseases and there are also many kind of chronic diseases available like chronic disease what is chronic disease and acute disease if you get a disease today and tomorrow it goes away that is called as an acute chronic if you're having a disease today and you have to live with the disease for lifelong so lifelong you have to take the drug lifelong you have to invest on your health so now that's where clinical research industry are doing drugs which are affecting the health and retroid the he uh, health for lifelong like hi hypertension diabetes this is small examples i can also give you an example of an oncology like today we are getting a cancer example as a breast cancer we are removing the cancer giving you the treatment for three months and every three months you have to go for the follow -up because once there is an abnormal cell has been formed in your body so anytime due to any chemical reaction that abnormality can come back so it is become a chronic disease now so because of that chronic and once if you don't take treatment for the chronic disease obviously you will die right we will be losing our near and dear ones so that's where the health management has to be improved in order to manage their health with the disease condition so we are doing a lot of research on oncology and central nervous system like parkinson's so this is one example alzheimer's so now what is parkinson's and what is alzheimer's what is Parkinson and what is Alzheimer? So this is a kind of diseases which is retroiting the memory and also your tremble in your body, Parkinson's, which has been seen on the old age people after 60, 70 years. And they have to live with this condition forever. And we are making drugs to improve their with that health condition to get outcome from that disease. So likewise, you have many, many department like endocrinology you have diabetes cardiovascular where you have stunts you have many medical devices you have you you we are able to overcome myocardial infractions many infective diseases which you have to like tuberculosis pneumonia typhoid so there are many kind of infections which are happening and we also see covid so now many kind of indications are there available in the market which is giving you chronic diseases and clinical research professionals are working not only to earn money but also to do something better for the society right we don't want our near and dear ones also to get affected because of this and if some drug is going to available there in the market definitely we are going to use the drug and we can improve your health condition okay so this is about your clinical trial business what i told like from when it has been moved and emerged and where exactly we are right now in and many us marketers are looking to us to india why because we have a lot of skills many people are educated we have a lot of patient population you have a lot of skill set mindset technology so that it can be used to do a betterment of your research and in india also the picture of clinical research is very big like many already many companies are there in the market it's not someone new industry has to form and new job opportunities have to be given already available availability is there a lot of job pools are available there in the market so these is a cumulative data just taken in past year in 2020 how much jobs were available in your one job site which is Glassador. I've given an overpretation and interpretation how many jobs are available there in the market. So if you also would like to join this market for the revolution, you can definitely choose clinical research and clinical data management so that your growth curve, like you can start as an analyst, grow as an associate, manager, 
lead analyst team lead and project manager so where you can earn like anything okay so you can also not only look only for one source of company to give you a job you can apply for your jobs in all these companies the opportunity is broad for you and analytics so what is analytics these days we are using a lot of applications we are talking about gi artificial intelligence ai right chat gpt so we use all this technologies in day to day and it is all analytical systems which we are using a lot these days in the market and you know because of this only we can able to see the hike in the salary and you definitely the base is the database for that so definitely a database is required for you in order to give to you an yield and you can like in your 10 years 15 years you can become and lead the show right with the good organograms okay so where you can also earn in lakhs and also you can have a very good work life balance okay so this is a salary figure of people who are working in clinical research market as an average salary which again i have taken from glassdoor so if you want to start as a 0 to 2 years definitely the average salary is 4 to 6 lakhs if you have the analyst and informatics knowledge and you can move into 40 lakhs package within 10 to 15 years of life span and if you want to get into such promising careers definitely clinical research is something blooming and you can see in india also you can see a lot of job markets with analytical and informatics and data management job okay so now let me just come into a conclusion because now i have given you an overview of your salary what you can be doing with this job how you can able to get this job with this what kind of skill sets and here coming to this program this is an online program where you will be involved in live lectures and you will be assessed after every module and you will be given the training on that particular application or software required to get a hands on industry in the market and this is what we are trying to do here in bcra 